Hello my friends and welcome back to another Foodie Friday Cook With Me. Fall is finally upon us. It may not feel like it where you live. I totally recognize that, especially from all my friends back in Vegas. I know it's been really, really hot there, but here, been in the 70s, absolutely beautiful, and fall is finally here. Football has started, we're back in school, and it's time to do some fall goodness. So today, we're gonna be whipping out some delicious mini bites for football Sundays. We definitely like to watch football here in our house. My husband is from Texas, so of course he is a natural born Cowboys fan. And we're gonna be making some food that is delicious pub style finger food. First and foremost, we're gonna be making a fan favorite here in my house that is uh, tachos or uh, tater tot nachos. They're absolutely delicious. Uh, we're also gonna be making a Monte Cristo slider. If you've ever had a Monte Cristo, it is a delicious ham and turkey sandwich that has been deep fried, covered in powdered sugar. It's phenomenal if you've never had one. This is an easy way to make them for a crowd and you don't have to fry anything. It makes it much easier. We're also gonna be making a copycat of the Chili's queso dip. So their skillet queso dip. We love the, the Chili's queso dip. It is delicious. It's a fan favorite as well. And then the last thing we're gonna be making is something my kids literally lose their mind over when they hear I'm making it, and that is banana pudding. So this one is an easy recipe that feeds a crowd. I make it all the time, my kids love it. And we're gonna to top it all off with a delicious and easy raspberry lemonade margarita. So we got a lot on our plate today. Let's go ahead and get started. To get started on our tachos, we are going to cook our tater tots. So I'm starting with a sheet pan, then I'm going to line it with some tin foil. Now this part isn't necessary, however, I feel like it's a twofold. It makes the cleanup a heck of a lot easier, and it also kind of crisps up your tater tots a little bit more. So spray it really well with Pam so that your tater tots don't stick to it. And then I'm using this big bag of tater bites that we purchased at Price Chopper. And normally, if I were really making this for a big crowd, which typically I would be, however, it's the weekend, which means half my children have scattered. I'm only gonna be making about half the bag, but if I were making this for everybody, I typically would make two trays, which would give us leftovers. There is nothing better than some tachos in the morning, uh, fried up in the pan with a drippy egg on top. So don't be afraid of leftovers. They taste delicious. But for today, we're just going to make one sheet because like I said, half my children are gone. My teenagers have significant others and they're always away. So <laughs> For this weekend, we're only feeding the little people, so we're just gonna make one sheet. So make sure that they are in a single uh, layer. You don't want any that are laying on top of each other, otherwise they won't cook evenly. And then pop them into the oven based on the directions on the bag. Okay, so we've got our tater tots going in the oven. You wanna do that first so that they have plenty of time to crisp up. While that's going, we're gonna get started on our banana pudding so that can get into the fridge and start to cool and harden, well not harden, but stiffen. Um, and then we're gonna get to working on the sandwiches. For our banana pudding recipe today, we're gonna to be using chessman cookies instead of vanilla wafers. If you've never had a chessman cookie, it is a delicious crispy butter cookie. They are to die for. It's like a shortbread cookie, so very good similar to the ones that you might find in those little tins, uh, but absolutely delicious. They're addicting, and they've got these cute little chess players on them. In the spring, you can find them with flowers and birds and butterflies, and uh, for the holidays, they do change them up. So keep an eye on them, because you can always find them uh, you know, decked out for the holidays. So we're using a nine by 13 dish and we are just lining the bottom of the dish with the chessman cookies. Now, they're not gonna fit perfectly as you see here. It just kind of breaks them up here at the end, but it does typically take one whole bag of chessman cookies to line the bottom of your pan. Kind of spread them out, get them going. Next up, we're gonna use bananas. So 
you want nice ripe bananas for this look for those that have been browned a little bit it's okay if they've got a little bruising on them you're not going to see them but you want them really sweet and completely ripe so make sure that they are not yellow at all and that they're incredibly easy to cut through otherwise they're going to just add a little bit of a bitter flavor to your banana pudding and that is not what you want now the recipe that I have followed forever calls for six bananas however I always go a little over the top because I like a lot of banana to go with a lot of pudding this recipe does make a lot of pudding so I'm also going to use this really cool banana slicer that I have we actually purchased this on Amazon as a joke for my children because they like to cut up their fruit when they eat it and so my sister-in-law had bought uh, this little banana slicer for my boys to make it easier and it actually really is incredibly easy so I'm just using this I'll put it in my Amazon storefront uh, in my kitchen section but this part is completely unnecessary you can just use a knife this just makes things go super fast as you can see here and it's a fun tool to use so a little banana slicer there we're just slicing those up you want them in bite-sized pieces and then you want to just layer them on top of your chessman cookies again using the amount of bananas that you prefer next step grab another mixing bowl and we're going to make our vanilla pudding so for this you're going to use a five ounce bag and which is typically like the family size and you're going to make the pudding by doing uh, just the pudding packet and then two cups of cold milk into your pudding mixture it may say something different on the package to be honest i've never looked this is just what the recipe calls for and then you're going to get a whisk and you're going to mix that up now it's not going to stiffen immediately but it does go very very quickly so just stir it up there let it start to stiffen and then put it off to the side to let it finish developing in another mixing bowl you're going to do one whole eight ounce cream cheese cheese you want to make sure that this is softened so leave it out on your counter uh, for a couple of hours um, so that it gets nice and soft it just makes it easier to mix if it's stiff it doesn't blend and get creamy so that's really important that you pay attention to making sure that it gets soft we're also going to use one whole can of sweetened condensed milk this is one of the small cans so this has uh, 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk and sweetened condensed milk is such a great tool when you're cooking or baking it also makes a really delicious homemade uh, coffee creamer so if you ever run out of coffee creamer in your house uh, but you have some sweetened condensed milk which I always have it makes a delicious coffee creamer in a pinch so uh, and then you're also going to uh, blend that together so I'm just grabbing my mixer you want to make sure that it's nice and creamy because this is going to be the filling of your banana pudding and you might be thinking well why didn't you use banana pudding <laughs> because the banana flavor is going to come from your actual bananas we're not doing any artificial banana flavor today and I actually think that keeps it really fresh and delicious tasting so mix up your uh, cream cheese and your sweetened condensed milk until they're nice and creamy and then you're going to add in your vanilla pudding which as you can see there now it is completely developed and nice and stiff go ahead and add that in and then again just mix it nice and creamy make sure that you get all the bits mixed in there it doesn't take much and then we're going to add in our final ingredient and that is cool whip again cool whip comes in the freezer section so you want to make sure that you uh, let that come to room temperature let it soften not room temperature but let it uh, soften up and defrost and this recipe calls for about 12 ounces of whipped topping however I can only find it in eight ounces or like 16 ounces so I didn't use the entire container uh, I just used what I needed and then you're going to use a uh, plastic spatula to just fold that whipped cream in you don't want to stir this or blend this because you'll lose the fluffy texture just make sure you're folding it in and then you're just going to go ahead and top this on top of all of your bananas it does make a lot of puddings so just make sure that you are careful as you're putting this in and then spread it out across the top of your bananas get it nice and uh, into a thin or not a thin layer but an even layer definitely not thin 
And then you're going to add the final piece, which is your chessman cookies. Again, you're going to use one whole package to put chessman cookies across the top. And when you serve this, typically what ends up happening is a serving is one whole chessman cookie size. And it ends up working out perfectly. So go ahead and line out your chessman cookies and your pudding is going to be ready to go. Once you have all of your cookies onto your pudding, go ahead and top it with a little bit of plastic uh, wrap or some kind of uh, topping there. If you've got a lid, you could do that too. I just use some plastic wrap right across the top and then you're going to pop it into your refrigerator to let it stiffen up before it's time to eat. Okay, so our banana pudding is done. It's in the fridge. It's stiffening up, and that's going to be ready to eat here soon. Uh, I've also taken out our tater tots. They were done. I could smell them. They were nice and brown and crispy, so they are on top of the stove. We're going to come back to those here in just a minute, but first things first, we're going to get our Monte Cristo sandwiches in the oven. And to make those sandwiches, you're going to start with Hawaiian rolls. Now, if you have never had a Hawaiian roll, which I'm sure that's probably not true. <laughs> Unless you're in a place where they don't sell them, but Hawaiian rolls are a delicious sweet uh, Roll they're sweetened with pineapple juice. They're absolutely delicious They don't taste like pineapple, but they are so very good And they're the perfect size for a little slider because they're nice and small. They make a perfect little burger um, And they're excellent. So today we're going to be using them for a sandwich and we're actually going to be baking the sandwich So it's going to be yum and warm and gooey. So let's go ahead and get started for our Monte Cristo sandwiches today, we're gonna get started with our Hawaiian rolls. Now you're just gonna need one package, but if you need to make more, you can do two. And you're gonna take the entire packet, the entire um, rolls out of the package, leave them all connected, and then cut them in half while they're still connected. I'm using a bread knife here to just cut the top off, and then uh, you'll that's how you're going to put them into your baking dish. I am using a brownie dish today, but you can use any kind of dish that you like. We're gonna start with some uh, Dijon mustard, and you're going to spread that all across your sandwiches. Now, again, in typical Tiffany fashion, uh, it calls for about half the amount of Dijon that I'm using right now, but we like a lot of flavor. I don't like my... <laughs> I don't like my sandwiches to be dry, so I'm definitely putting on more than it calls for, but that's what we like. If you're like me and you like a lot of flavor in your food, definitely double what it says to use in the recipe uh, because it's just not enough. It's never enough. You always got to do more, right? And as the saying goes, if I am extra, if I'm too much, there's always somebody out there that's less. So if you don't like that much, that's okay. There's going to be somebody out there that does less. We're going to be using baby Swiss today for our sandwich. You can find this in uh, your cheese section in your grocery store. And you're going to put down six uh, cheese slices to begin with. So just layer those out and that'll be our first layer of cheese. I'm just kind of making sure that they're evenly spaced here. So ends up kind of being a double layer. And then we're gonna start with some honey ham. So you can use honey ham from the deli if you want. That's what I would prefer. However, the line at the grocery store was crazy when I went and I did not wanna wait. So we're just gonna put down a layer of honey ham. I am doing two, a layer of two slices, but again, that's up to you. You could do just one slice if you like. And then we're gonna add in some turkey breast. I'm using oven roasted turkey breast. You can use whatever you prefer but I feel like this one has a uh, gentle enough flavor. It's not smoky at all, so it doesn't compete with the rest of the flavors in the sandwich. So go ahead and do another layer of the turkey. Again, I'm doing two, and I think that's just the right amount of meat. When you're done, it does give you a nice hearty sandwich. And then you're going to top it with another six slices of the baby Swiss.
When you're done with your toppings, you're gonna go ahead and put the top of your sandwiches back on. And now we're gonna make our topping. So for this, you're gonna use four tablespoons of butter. You're gonna put this into a glass mixing cup and this will allow you to pop it into the microwave. You wanna melt that. You don't wanna get it too hot, so kinda of let it sit for a second. And then you're gonna add in one egg. Mix this up really, really well. Make sure that it's nice and creamy. If your butter is too hot, it will scramble your egg a little bit, so just be careful. I'm mixing it today with a little plastic spoon, and then once that's nice and creamy, you're going to pour that all across the top of your sandwiches. This is what gives your sandwiches a little bit of a French toast flavor, and and this is in lieu of frying it. So a traditional Monte Cristo sandwich is a fried sandwich. You dip it in um, something similar to a pancake batter and then you fry it and it's absolutely delicious. So this gives us the same idea without dipping it and frying it. So make sure that it's covering your entire sandwiches. Make sure that every inch of the tops are covered. So I'm just spreading it across the top and this is going to be absolutely delicious when you eat it. You're probably thinking this looks bananas, but I promise you it's delicious. Once you have it completely spread out all the way across your sandwiches, you're gonna grab some tin foil and you're going to uh, loosely cover your sandwiches. This is going to allow the insides to bake evenly. We're gonna bake it like this and then at the end, we're gonna take it out and take the, the tin foil off and bake it for a little bit longer. So pop it into a oven that's been set at 350 degrees for about uh, 15 minutes and then we'll come back to it. Next up, we're gonna make our queso dip. We're starting with a block of Velveeta cheese. This, I believe, is a 15 ounce block of Velveeta cheese. Go ahead and get it open and into your saucepan. Have your heat on about medium heat, and then you're gonna add in one can of Hormel chili with no beans. This is going to be the base of your queso dip, and it's absolutely delicious. It does have really great flavor, and again, no beans. Make sure you grab the one with no beans. You could probably do it with the one with beans, but we prefer the no beans. I just think it is a, a better flavor for this dip. Go ahead and mix those together, and you're going to want to let your cheese melt. And you don't want it to sit too still so that you don't fry your cheese. Make sure you're using a non-stick skillet so that way nothing is sticking to the bottom. And just keep moving it around until your cheese has melted. Next to it, you'll see another skillet there. I am cooking up some bacon in there. That is for our tachos. So I've let this kind of sit a little bit. As you see, the cheese is starting to melt. That's what you want it to look like and just keep stirring so that everything is coming together as the cheese melts. And then we're gonna add in the seasonings here in just a little bit. While that is coming together, we're gonna go ahead and check on our sandwiches. I had taken off the cover to these sandwiches a little bit ago, and here they are all finished. So you cook them for 15 minutes with the tin foil on, 10 minutes without it, and they come out absolutely delicious. Now we're coming back to our dip and we're adding in one cup of milk. For this I'm using whole milk. And you're just gonna stir that in until it's completely blended. It might seem like it's gonna be a little bit too watery, but the Velveeta does stiffen back up as it cools. So you definitely want to make sure that you have a good amount of fluid in your a dip so that it doesn't get too stiff. So just stir this around until it is combined. It will combine, it just takes a little bit. And then we're gonna season it up. We're gonna start with chili powder. You need two teaspoons of chili powder in your dip. Next up, we're gonna add in paprika. Again, another two teaspoons of paprika for your dip. And then the final, um, seasoning that you're going to add is cumin. So for the cumin, you'll only need about a half a teaspoon. So uh, toss in what you feel like you need. If you like it a little smokier, you can add a touch more, but this really is the perfect recipe. 
You're not going to need to salt or pepper it because it definitely has enough of that already. So just stir it until it's combined and then you can lower down your heat and keep it warm until you're ready to serve. You could also serve this in a crock pot to keep it warm. Now we're gonna work on our tachos. So I've had my cheese out and we're going to grate about one whole eight ounce package of cheese and another half of a package, maybe even a whole. I think I could have used a little bit more, but typically I think two packages of cheese would be appropriate. So just shredding the cheese and then adding that shredded cheese to the top of the tachos. They are nice and warm. I had just taken them out of the oven and we're gonna pop them back in once we have all of the cheese evenly spread across the top. So again, this is something you can use whatever kind of cheese you prefer. I'm using the aged sharp cheddar, um, the Vermont ch uh, sharp cheddar from Cabot. That's what I like to use. That's what I always use. And now we're gonna chop up our bacon. So I had cooked an entire package of bacon and I had to taste it to make sure that it was okay. <laughs> and you're gonna go ahead and chop that up into little bite-sized pieces. And then we're gonna sprinkle that across the top of our tachos. You want it to be nice and uh, even and easy to eat. So make sure that you cut them into small bite-sized pieces and then sprinkle those across the top. And again, you're gonna pop this back into your oven. I have it set at 350 and I left it in for probably another five to seven minutes to let everything warm up and melt. Now I'm gonna plate our dip while that's waiting. And I got this really beautiful tray here from Walmart along with that beautiful bowl. Both are from Walmart. I think both are from Better Homes and Gardens. And I'm using the lightly salted on the border chips. These are absolutely delicious. They're crispy and buttery and perfect. While our tater tots are finishing up, we're gonna go ahead and make our topping. You're gonna use about um, four to six ounces of cream cheese, or not cream cheese, sour cream, and we're gonna add in ranch. You wanna add in a pretty good amount, about the same as one whole package of ranch seasoning. Um, it's up to you how much you like, because I have it in, um, you know, a, a different dispenser than a package. I just kind of do it, you know, to taste. I eyeball it, taste it, see if that's what I like. And then we're going to set that to the side. We're also going to uh, dice up some green onion. Don't skip this part. This part gives it a really delicious final flavor, brings it all together, gives it something fresh and a little bit of a crispy bite when you eat your tachos. I've now taken out our tachos from the oven and I've added them to this platter. This platter is actually from Hobby Lobby. I found it in their fall section. And we're gonna go ahead and add our sour cream to the top. Just kind of spread it out and then you can use your spatula or like here I'm using a wooden knife and you can just kind of spread it out across your uh, tater tots and it will you know, with the heat of the tater tots, it will just kind of melt into everything um, and be absolutely delicious. You could also have a little bit on the side for people to dip if they like a little bit more of the sour cream. Once you have that fully spread out across your tater tots, you're going to sprinkle on your scallions or your green onions. Again, don't skip this part. It does add a really delicious fresh, fresh flavor at the end. And again, you could have some to the side for people to put more if they like it, but it is delicious and nobody skips this part in my house. Finally, it's time to plate up our Monte Cristo sandwiches. So I'm just using my knife here to cut them because we hadn't done that before. Make sure you cut all the way through because you have those two layers of cheese as well as the ham and the turkey. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you cut all the way through to the bottom. And then I'm just using a elongated platter. You guys have seen this one in almost every one of my videos. I love this platter, it's from Home Goods. And we're gonna lay these out 
and um, just kind of stack them on top of each other. Final touch for our Monte Cristo sandwiches is a sprinkle of powdered sugar and typically you would have a bowl with some blackberry preserves or raspberry preserves to dip however I had forgotten that piece. We're now going to make our raspberry lemonade margarita. We're starting off with raspberry lemonade. Give it a really good shake and you're going to put this um, you know as much as you want in your cup probably I don't know, close to a cup, I would say. And then I'm adding in two ounces of um, silver tequila. And then I'm also adding in about a half an ounce of triple sec. Once you have that all in your glass, make sure you stir it up really well. You could put this in a shaker if you prefer. Um, just stir it up really, really well. And then for some garnish, I'm adding in some fresh raspberries, just a few and our margarita is ready to go. Okay, my friends, I've got my plate made. I'm ready to dig in. I wanna start with the Monte Cristo sandwich. So yummy. Hmm, sweet, salty. Normally, I would dip this in a blackberry preserves, and I forgot to get it at the grocery store. Make sure you dip yours in it. it. Takes it over the top. Let's go ahead and try our tachos. Mmm, -hmm. so good. I've already been eating about a pound of the dip. Let's take a sip of our margarita. Mmm, and it's pretty strong. If you don't like yours that strong, you can do one ounce of tequila, half an ounce of uh, triple sec if this is too strong for you. Finally, we're gonna go ahead and try the banana pudding even though I already know what it's gonna taste like and how delicious it's gonna be because I make it all the time. So good. Mm-hmm. The chessman cookie, that's where it's at. Once you make your banana pudding with a chessman cookie, you will never go back. The buttery deliciousness of a chessman cookie just takes it over the top. Okay, my friends, that is it for our Foodie Friday Cook With Me this week. I am excited to go sit down and watch some ball with my family. I hope that you enjoyed this res or these recipes. I'll have them all linked for you down below, the ones that I have a recipe for. The other ones, like the tachos, those I just kind of wing it, so I'll have that recipe for you down in the description box. If you have any questions, I love to hear them. If you try any of these recipes, tag me on Instagram or let me know here on YouTube. And until the next one, my friends, happy eating.